Hey, Tarosphere, it's Holly from Cape Cod Creatures, and I am here this evening with an unboxing. Um, well, it's not really an unboxing because I have no willpower at all. So I went ahead and I saw the package on the doorstep and I'm like, oh, I'll save it to go online with and couldn't help myself. So anyway, I'm here with an unboxing for, well, a first impressions for the Arcanus. I am so excited. It's already got dog hair on it because my life is covered in dog hair, the Arcanus Tarot um, by David DePascal. It's amazing. So this was a Kickstarter campaign that I backed, I want to say back in March or April. And it's a minimalist deck. Um, it's just basically got a very simple illustration on each card for each character um, for and each card. Um, but it is like so good, you guys. So anyway, uh, the tier that I backed came with a print and an original sketch, uh, two decks, and the book. So we will start with, because um, when I opened it, like the thing that popped out most was the book. So, and this is probably like the highlight of the whole campaign, honestly, is the book. So the book is a blue cloth book. It is um, silver embossed. So it does differ a little bit from uh, the mock-up photo that was on the Kickstarter campaign. The mock-up photo had a border around this. Um, this square was actually a circle and there was some red embossing on the, on the, on the mock-up, but the final product wound up being silver with a blue cloth cover. And it's in, like I said, it's an amazing book. Um, the inside is pretty cool finish. It's got the like a photo, black and white photo of the cards. And the book itself, oh, he signed it. I didn't even notice that last night because I was so tired when I opened it. Um, let's see, so the inside, this deck is actually, this book is actually in color which is really nice. Each illustration for each of the cards is, like I said, it's in color, it's amazing. So you get a description for each, you get a description and a picture for each card. Um, you get some um, keywords, you get a little blurb about the card, you get a blurb about, and you get keywords for reversed, you get keywords, you get upright keywords, you get reversed keywords, you get a blurb for both upright and reversed. Uh, let's see. Does he talk about spreads in here? Ooh, he does. He includes a ton of spreads. So I don't know if you guys can see, but one, you've got like your simple three card spreads and he does, has a few captions down there for like different types of three card spreads because there are more than just one. Um, and then you get a cross spread. You get... Oh, they actually, oh, this one is kind of cute. It's their uh, do this, do not do this, potential outcome, and current problem. Um, blind spot spread, horseshoe spread. Let's see what else we've got going on here. Oh, the dreaded Celtic cross. This, this spread is not for everybody. Um, this is quite an advanced spread, and honestly, I find it to be outdated. You can get just as many, uh, you can get just as much info in good times out of working with one, two, or three cards that you can with the cross. Um, I don't know, I've just, I've never liked it. It always seemed overly complicated, especially if you're a beginner and you don't have a very good handle on tarot yet. Um, I've been reading tarot for about a year now, maybe a little under, and the, the Celtic cross still, still intimidates me. So if you're a beginner and you're intimidated by that spread, like do not feel bad. You can read tarot just as well without it. Um, like I said, the, this book is absolutely gorgeous. The page stock is thick, it's glossy, um, but it's not like too glossy, it's not obnoxiously glossy. Like this, it's honestly, it's just, it's a beautiful book. So I am glad that I pledged for the tier that, got, that where the book came with it. Um, and then um, as, as a stretch goal, there was a enamel pin included, which is totally totes my goats cute. It is the hermit. Come on, focus. 
I hate this camera some days. Can we get it to focus? Oh, come on. There we go. So it's a little embossed pin and the lantern is actually like it's free floating on there. Oh my goodness. So yeah, it's really cute. The backing is really cute. It's made to look like the actual hermit card. Um, it's just, like I said, a really very well thought out enamel pin. Um, I just thought it was really cute with the little dangly. Uh, okay. And then I got a print. Um, cause you could choose a print of your favorite card, which was awesome. And oh my goodness, come out here, Mr. Print. Oh no. Oh my goodness. There we go. So I chose, uh, for obvious reasons, for those who know, um, who are familiar with me and my channel and my, my little animal situation going on at home, I of course chose the Eight of Pentacles as my print because I've got Great Danes and I actually really enjoy this representation of the Eight of Pentacles. Although anybody with a Dane would tell you that those dogs like super aren't into working hard at all. I mean, they are a working breed and all that good stuff, but like they're not like they're not honing any kind of skill anytime soon, unless you count sleeping on the couch as a skill. Um, all right, so we've got the print showed off. I'm gonna put that right in that little thing for right now. Um, and then, oh, the uh, sketch was actually another really nice little. This was the sketch. Um, I saw it on his, like he had a version, I don't know if it was this sketch exactly, but he had a, um, the sketch was on his Instagram feed and I was like, oh my God, that's so adorable. And then when I received it, I was very excited because um, it was a surprise sketch. So I will be taking both the print and this to a um, local framer to get that done. Um, and I actually have some photos and stuff I have to go get preserved. So my mom was just like, here's a bunch of photos of your grandfather from like a million years ago. And I was just like, why did you put that in my house? Do you not know what I've got going on? Like, why would you put that in my house right now? Um, let's see. So I'm sure you're all anxious to see the actual deck. So this is it. It comes in a tuck box. It's quite a large deck, actually. It's probably about the size of the Marielle, maybe a little bit bigger if you're familiar with Schiffer decks. Um, and it's like I said, it's the same size. Um, hmm. I think if I was to, if I was to, if there was, if if David was to release a second edition, I would love to see the tuck box go by the wayside. I would love to see a two-part box for this. Um, with a ribbon inside. I just, it's such a beautiful deck. Like when, when I get it open, you guys are gonna be like, oh my God, yes, it is a beautiful deck. I would love to see it done, like I said, in a two-part box. I feel like two-part boxes uh, for indie decks present a little bit better. They hold up better in the long run as far as protecting your deck in the long run. Um, but it is a really cute little two-part, two-part, um, I'm sorry, it is a really cute little tuck box. Um, it says it combines, the Arcanist Tarot combines simple modern character design with the love of animals. And for those not familiar with the artist's work, um, he apparently has done work for like Nickelodeon, DreamWorks, and a couple of other, um, couple of other, like his artwork is actually, his style is really evocative of Samurai Jack for those who are old enough to remember Sar Samurai Jack. Hey, Deshan, how are you? Um, but anyway, so it, it, it combines uh, modern character design with the love of animals. And animals are traditionally revered by many cultures as moral guides, sacred guardians, and doors to the spirit world. May the beasts in this deck guide you to the wisdom and reflection you seek. So the first thing to know if you are a fan of animal decks is this: these animals are anthropomorphic. So they are not like straight up animals out of the woods munching on you know leafy greens and other animals or whatnot so this is not a natural deck this is an animal deck but it is not a natural world animal deck um this is the back of the deck this is actually silver embossed which is really cool like the so the design is fully reversible can't tell which is which 
Awesome for those that do like to read in reverse. And I'm going to sneeze because I've got some sage going and apparently it's going to make me sneeze tonight. Um, and Henrietta says hi to everybody, by the way. So, yep, it's embossed. And then one of the stretch goals was cards that are embossed on the other side. So this is just the title card. Sorry to tease you like that. But it's got an embossed border all the way around, which is really cool. And the top of each card um, where the number is is also embossed. So, like I said, it's um, like this is just a title card, like a little bit about the author, like an about the author page um, in the deck. So I'm just going to set that aside for now. And we are going to start with the uh, Fool and work our way down. So this is the Fool. As you can see, the cards aren't titled, but they are numbered up at the top. And they're numbered um, except for the zero with Roman with Roman numerals. So you, have to do, you do have to be a little, um, oh my god, Henrietta is going to make me punch a kitten in like five seconds. I love her so much, but that in the background is why you don't get a cockatoo. Um, there's nothing wrong with her, by the way, you guys. She just... <sighs> That's what they do. Um, so anyway, this is the fool. Um, he looks like a ferret or a weasel or something in this to me. I would have to um, read the book to figure out exactly what kind of an animal he is. But it's like I said, it's a very cute minimalist representation of the animals and the essence of the card. But he does somehow manage to capture like what's important about each character. Um, and then we've got the magician, and of course you've got all four symbols represented here, and he's a rabbit. What better to represent the magician than pulling a rabbit out of a hat? There's bedlam going on in my house right now. Um, then we've got the um, high priestess. I'll be right back. Excuse me. Unacceptable. Sorry, everybody, but at least if she's here, she's not out there screaming. Um, <laughs> all right, so I lied. She is in here screaming. She better not scream, I swear to God. You're not cute. Yes, you are. Um, okay, so this is the High Priestess, a cute little wolf. This is a nice... Hi, honey. This is a nice departure from what you would usually see for the high priestess, which is an owl or a cat or something ridiculous. Come up here. Yes, hi. Oh, my goodness. Okay. So, yeah, it's a nice departure from what you would usually see for the high priestess. And then we've got the empress, which is a fox, which is, nope, that's just a cat. I thought this was a fox. I've been going for days thinking this was a fox and this is a cat. Um, the emperor is a raccoon, which I really enjoy. The hierophant as a stag, possibly an elk. Not something that you usually would see that kind of an animal for um, the emperor. Got the lovers as storks or swans. Is that a swan? I'm going to go ahead and say stork. The horse for the chariot, which is a very common representation for chariot. Um, line for strength, of course. This was a, um, this was actually one of the things that was going to be up to be made into an enamel pen. And I would have loved to have seen this as a pen, actually. I really love the way he's curled around. He's very cute. The hermit as the bear, um, which is, of course, what was turned into the pen. Very cute, very accurate representation of that card. Um, and then we've got the rooster for the Wheel of Fortune, which I think is really cute. And then we've got a, is that a cheetah or a panther? Or a lioness? It's a big cat, basically, for justice. Bat for the hangman. We see that a lot, but um, 
I think he's got fruit bat. <laughs> like, I'm just going to pretend he's a fruit bat and he's adorable. Um, or flying fox bat. Uh, then we've got this guy for death. I actually really like. It's a departure from any kind of like blatant animal, really. And he's not like he's cute, but he's also like very evocative of death. Like he fits in, but is different enough. I think this is the only character really where he uses like gray and black and like sticks with a black and black and gray kind of theme. And then we've got a um, an otter for temperance. The devil is like some sort of weird bat winged, um, like goat creature thing. And then we've got an eagle for the tower. I really like this representation of the tower. I mean, if you're gonna have a disaster, it should be a bird falling out of the sky because that's not something that you usually see very often. Um, and then we've got a chimera for the star. Very cute. I like how he does use some mythical creatures in this deck. Um, Cause there's nothing wrong with using mythical creatures. They're creatures too. And different parts of the creatures make up different things. Like where like a, like a star, like it's, it's like dreams and wishes and ridiculousness. It's like, why not use a mythical creature for the star card? Like that, if, if ever there was a place to use one, that would be it. Um, then we've got a dragon for the moon which is interesting because when we get to the suit of wands, they're all dragons. And no, cause he used a cat for the Empress. So um, yeah, I guess he does repeat animals because there's a suit, um, the, cups are, the cups are cats. Hey, Deshan. Oh, hey, 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 Amy, how are you? Oh my goodness, I just saw that you were on. Oh my goodness. Um, oh my goodness, that's exciting. Um, how are you? And then we've got another dragon for the sun. So they, they very dragon heavy deck. If you like dragons and like cartoon dragons, this is definitely a good deck for you. And then we've got, um, we've got another bird for judgment. I want to say that this is a Phoenix, um, but it doesn't like, cause there's like fire and a long fiery tail and whatnot. So, I mean, it could, it's, if you were going to use a bird for judgment, a phoenix would probably be the way to go, but um, there's not much there by way of fire. And then we've got the world represented by a monkey and then a few of the other animals kicking around there. Um, oh, you're just, you just, you keep just missing the chats. That's no fun. If it makes you feel any better, I haven't done too, too many of them. So you're not missing too, too much. And Henrietta has been very disruptive of them anyway. So yay Henrietta um okay so then we're on to the suits so for aces we have dragons um or for wands we have dragons and of course we've got like the ace and the two it gets a little pippish here which isn't necessarily horrible but like they do also evoke a little bit of like you know, this guy's biting is like for the two of wands, right? Technically, that's like kind of planning and contemplating, but also like stalling a little bit. Like you're in a place that's kind of comfortable and you don't know if you should do something new, but maybe the time is right. So it's a little like, mm, like it's, it's like almost ready to go. Like this guy, like he's biting his tail. He's not quite, you, you know, you can't really like go, go, go if you're biting your own tail and his eyes are closed. He's not quite ready to like move on and go and do things yet. And then like with the three of wands, you know, he's already kind of like, I don't know, like he, he looks like he's already like, he's looking like he's looking out, but like he's starting to climb and get there and like, he's getting ready to go and move a little bit better. Um, and then we've got the four of wands which is like kind of that feeling of home and contentment. You do get like the almost the bridge formation that we see so often, or like that that archway kind of a feeling in, is, is evoked in the card. And then you get like the little flower on one of the wands. Um, and then we've got, ooh, a sea dragon, which would be the five of wands, which is the one where they're all fighting each other. So like I said, the, the, the deck is definitely pippish. It's it's illustrated pips. Not all of them really capture some of the feeling of um, whatever's going on. Um, 
And I think that maybe we need to read the book a little bit about what's going on there, but I don't know. So anyway, this is the Six of Wands, the Seven. Although the Seven of Wands, I don't know, I could I could maybe see all the, because the Seven of Wands is the moral high ground. And then here we've got a whole bunch of dragons like tying each other up in a knot which is like kind of weird. Um, and then we've got the eight of wands. So you still have like the message incoming and, but it, and like the wands are definitely all pointed at this dragon, but he looks like he's like, he looks like he's like getting ready to take a hit. Um, so you definitely lose a bit of the positivity uh, that you would get with the eight of wands as far as the message is concerned, like, like an energy getting ready to go. Like he looks like he's getting ready to submit instead of getting ready to harness that energy and move on to the next thing. Um, then we've got the nine of wands and the 10. Um, again, a little, like they're all bundled together like you would traditionally see, but a little hard to get that feeling of, you know, burden and like, you know, the road is almost there and what have you. Um, and then we've got the, the, the paid, the, the, um, courts are where the characters come like really alive. So we've got a page, like he's definitely a cute young, like a little dragon youngling, like he's getting ready to go do some fun stuff. The knight is definitely, like, again, like that, that's a, that's a old, that's an old timey, like knight's going to go fight a dragon kind of a dragon, but the dragon is the knight. So I really like kind of the twist on that. Um, and then we've got the queen again. It's just, she looks like a dragon who's kind of higher, who's harnessed that fiery energy and passion and kind of a um, nurturing way. And then we've got the king again, somebody who's harnessed that, um, who's harnessed that fiery energy and like, he's a little more seasoned with it and he's making it work for him. Um, you know, again, he just looks a little more like kingly. Um, and then we move on to one of my favorite suits is the cups. We've got a Sphinx cat here for those who love Sphinx. Um, a big fluffy version. I love this one. He looks like Wilford Brimley. Diabetes. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I just really enjoy this. But again, this doesn't say two of cups to me. Um, so I think you really do. Hi, honey. Uh, you really do need to know. Hi. Yes. Hello. Yes, no, here, why don't you scoot back? Ow, honey. Ow, ow. Oh, she needs a nail trim. This doesn't say two of cups to me. Two of cups is like new love and partner. Oh my God, I can, mm, I love her so much. I just have to remember that I love her. Um, this is really, you guys, if you ever just think you want a pet bird, Tonight's not even like a difficult night with her. She just really wants attention and she's not going to stop until she gets it. And I have been petting this bird since two o'clock today. I literally put her down to feed the dogs and do this and she is not having it. Um, so anyway, this is the two of cups. Again, not really a two of cups card to me. And then we've got the three of cups. This is a little more like you know, Siamese, drinky, celebrate laughy, practical, jokey, like kind of like out with the gals kind of a cat to me. Um, so I'd get this one. And then the four of cups, which is, mm, I guess, he's got his eyes closed and he's not really looking at the cups that he's got. I get, but again, it doesn't, like they're all really cute. Or the five of cups, does anybody really get a sense of five of cups lost from this? Because I don't necessarily, um, you know, you've got one cup tipped over and then these, like, it just doesn't say five of cups to me. The artwork is adorable. Amy, yes, you're right. The artwork is really cool, but you really need to know your cards when you get, when you use these. So this is not a beginner deck. I would absolutely 100% say no for like, like definitely get it if the artwork speaks to you. But um, if you're just starting out reading, like you're not going to be working with this deck for a while. So just be prepared for that. Um, so this is Six of Cups. I do, however, like this representation of the Six of Cups because Six of Cups is traditionally like childhood issues and nostalgia and like good, like feel good, like family style, like 
you know, like the, 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 like the good, the feely good parts of childhood. And here we have a mom cat and a kitten cat. Um, we have a mom cat and a kitten cat. And then we have the flower, like we have one flower coming out of the cup and that kind of, you know, evokes the flowers in the traditional RWS six, six of, um, six of cups that we would usually see. And then we've got um, the seven where we do have the cups. And this is, I think, where he starts picking up a little bit on getting the meaning of the cards into some of the some of the artwork. So we've got the seven of cups where each cup has a different thing as far as decisions are concerned. Um, you know, we've got the eight of cups. This cat is walking away from all of these cups towards this new cup. Um, we've got the nine of cups. Of course, this is a smug looking cat enjoying that he's got all his cups. And then we've got the 10 of cups with that feeling of family. Stop eating my chair. Um, about to launch this bird into space. Um, okay. And then we've got the page really cute there. We've got the traditional fish in the cup and what's not to love about a fish martini if you're a cat. We've got the knight. Again, we've got another Siamese cat dressed up in a traditional samurai outfit. I, um, then we've got another Persian um, dressed up as the queen. This cat reminds me of Princess Caroline for BoJack Horseman fans. And then we've got the king of cups. And again, he does look a little more kingly. Like, so I said, the characters for the courts are just outstanding. And then we come to um, the swords, which is air, and we have birds. Wonderful choice. Big fan. Um, tonight, not so much of a fan, but for the most part, I am a huge fan of birds. So we've got a parrot for the ace. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about that. Um, having, like, I guess if you don't have a huge working knowledge of parrots, like, yeah, like a parrot could totally embody the Ace of Cups. Like, it's fun and jovial and lighthearted. Or, sorry, the Ace of Swords. Like, you know, it's a bird that can talk and joke and, like, oh, my God, it's totally fun. And they're smart and, sure, it's like a new fun energy. But um, if, you're, if you're a little more familiar with birds, you know that they're a little more involved than just an Ace style. Um, then we've got the Two of Swords. Again, a little more traditional with the imagery. Uh, three, the four, um, yes, a little pink kid. There she is. Isn't she adorable? Um, for those that can't see the chat, Amy said, my husband just walked by and yelled into our room, does she have a kid in the background screaming? <laughs> no, I have a bird screaming. It's like having a perpetual toddler. Um, and then we've got the five of swords. Um, where this bird does have a sword and he looks a little smug, but again, you do have to kind of remember, like you have to kind of draw back to your memory banks as far as remembering which card is which for this one. Um, we've got the uh, six of swords. I do like the idea of a swan for this card um, with like the little, like with like the little new moon over the head kind of a thing going on, like a blank slate. It's time for something new. Um, and swans do go across the water. So you've got like the boat water thing going on for that card. Um, but again, you have to kind of remember what the six of swords represents. And then we've got the seven of swords. Um, I do really like this smug asshole of a bird who's like stealing these swords. But um, again, it's not very traditional. You just kind of have to remember your card meanings here. And then, ooh, the Eight of Swords. This was one of the ones that I really enjoyed. First, I love me a Blue Jay. Um, blue Jays are, which is what I think, I'm pretty sure that this is supposed to be a Blue Jay. Blue Jays are members of the Corvid family, for those that don't know, which means that they are closely related to crows and ravens, which is why they are such jerks. Um, but yeah, no, you've got a blue jay who has kind of got himself in his own little trap there, and he doesn't know that if he just lets go of that ribbon, he'd be all set to go. Because, I mean, usually those birds are so smart, but they're so brazen that they get themselves into trouble. Like, they kind of create their own trouble. Um, and they don't back down, and they, like, they, they, again, it's just like somebody who's not willing to admit that they're in a place of trouble, and they could, you know, set themselves free of it if they just asked for help kind of a thing. Um, and then we've got the nine 
of swords, which is a flamingo hiding its head. Um, oh my goodness. Can you come here? Come on. I don't know why you're yelling. I don't. I don't know what has gotten into you tonight. Um, so we've got a flamingo hiding its head. Um, it might be an ostrich, but the beak is the beak. The beak says flamingo to me. Um, you know, kind of like hiding its head from the nightmare of all the swords, and it's trying to protect itself with the one sword. And then we've got the mallard. This is a really sad one. But again, it's a little more evocative of his card meanings, um, of regular card meanings. The Ten of Swords, like we totally get this. Um, and, you know, ducks are hunted and stuff all the time. So, you know, they, they chase after that duck call and then they get shot in the face. So <laughs> I can totally see a mallard or a duck as the um, Ten of Swords. And then we've got, I love this one, is a puffin. It's my favorite cereal when I was a kid. Um, so we've got a puffin. For the, we've got a puffin for the page. We've got a falcon for the knight. So of course we have a falcon. I love the. I, I love his characters for the court cards. Um, we've got like some sort of a peacock, like a peacock heron like character for the queen. I would have to look up and see what kind of a bird this is, but I would say a heron. Like I'm more like a great blue heron or something. Um, and then we've got a toucan for the king, which is really interesting. I would have put the toucan for the page, honestly, because toucans are like they're smart, they're but they're they're like super funny and lighthearted, and they're just they're very clownish. Like I would have I would have used this for the page as opposed to the king, because um, toucans are beautiful, but like they're just not very graceful. Well, I mean they're graceful when they're flying around, but like they hop like it's not to love about a bird that hops it's not very kingly to me um okay and then we've got another one of my favorite suits um is the the pentacles which is dogs great for like if you're gonna have um an animal for the the suit of earth and come like you know the 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 down to earth comforts like the more tangible things i think dogs is a fantastic choice for this. So we've got a Corgi for the Ace. Uh, we've got, I believe that's a Border Collie. We've got a Border Collie for the Two. And again, that looks a little more, looks a little more like he's getting back to regular card meetings with some of these. We've got a Three, we've got a um, Shetland Sheepdog for the Three. I love how they're sheeps. So we get some additional characters on this card. Um, but this is the card of, again, working and mastery and teamwork you've got the the sheeps working together to have these here and then you've got this guy like watching over so um again like con like consulting with somebody on a major project teamwork like that kind of a thing this is it's a really good card for that and then we've got the um four of pentacles for the um we've got a saint bernard for that so four pentacles why can i not bring that up in my memory banks oh that's somebody who's kind of guarding and collect like they, they're all set but they're like kind of guardy of their wealth which is like really weird i would never put a saint bernard for that i don't know why uh then we've got the five of pentacles which is um needing help and sick and you know like you know kind of like i guess i would honestly for this yeah i would i would maybe choose a bulldog um they have a lot of health problems they're just a breed that has not been served right by humanity. So they're, they are a little down on their luck as far as that's concerned. But again, great dogs. And then we've got a Sharpe for the um, Six of Pentacles and dumping out his money to share with people. And we've got a Seven of Pentacles. This is traditionally the guy that's like waiting for like on his farm and this dog is like digging up his coins so he can harvest his he can harvest his little coins which i suppose would we could sub in sub in some bones for that um we've got the great dane this is the print that i chose uh the apprentice card somebody who's working on becoming a master at a skill um usually alone like a repetitive task like that kind of thing I would have liked to have seen like maybe a dog that's really good at obedience trials and whatnot in here. Like I would have loved to have seen a, lab a Labrador Retriever 
for the Eight of Pentacles. I love you. Stop it. That really hurts. Um, so we've got a nine. We've got the nine of pentacles. It's a Shiba Inu. <laughs> so um trying to think, yeah, well, I guess Shibas have kind of made it. I mean, they're super cute. Like this is usually they're pampered upon, they're pampered and doted upon. So yeah, I could see where that would. And then we've got a German Shepherd as the 10 for like legacy. Because I mean, if you think about it, what dog has built up more of a legacy than the German Shepherd as far as like police and military service, um, you know, seeing eye. The dogs are hard workers and thus have amassed like this amazing, um, amazing reputation and legacy as being dogs that work really hard for their, for their, um, you know, for their reputation. And then we've got a chow for the page. It was really weird. I might have chosen this for the king. Um, we've got a Roddy for the knight. Um, I love that a Rottweiler is, is the knight here. Is that a Rottweiler or a Husky? I can't decide. So it's either a Rottweiler or a Husky. To me, that looks like a Rottweiler, but it's also got like the floofy tail and the white at the bottom, so it could be a Husky. But either way, good choice for the knight. And then we've got a Saluki for the queen. For those aren't that aren't familiar with Salukis, those look like greyhounds with like amazing like Cindy Crawford hair. Um, <laughs> and they take they require a lot of grooming and a lot of pampering, but they are very sweet and nurturing in return. Very snuggly dogs. And then we have a greyhound for the king. Yeah, so I think I would have put the greyhound as the knight. And then I would have put um, the chow as the page, maybe. I don't know. That's weird. I, I don't know. I would have mixed that up a little bit. So that is the deck. The cardstock is pretty, de it's decent cardstock. It's better than Llewellyn, but it's like it's a basic cardstock. It, you can shuffle it. Um, the shuffling is actually a little bit awkward because the deck is so large. So it's definitely one of those. It's got to be shuffled hand over hand. And this is the first time I've actually shuffled it. So um, definitely requires some hand over hand shuffling. Let's see if I can get a bridge going on. Um, she needs a nail trim so bad. You have no idea. My shoulder's going to be bloody. Ooh, I got a really good mingle. And the bridge is decent. But again, it's a really large deck. And because of the um, gilding, I wouldn't want to trim it. Yeah, because of because of the silver embossing and gilding or whatever, I, I wouldn't want to trim it. It is not it is not gilded on the edges. Like there is no silver on the edges, which is nice because honestly, like that would drive me nuts. Because this deck is big enough where I'm gonna nick it with my fingernails around the edges. I actually got two copies of the deck, one for keeping in pristine collecting condition and one for using. Um because I know me, like <laughs> I'm just gonna, I'm gonna want to use the crap out of this deck, and then someday someone will be like, oh, I'm looking for a copy of Arcana's first edition, and blah 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 blah, and like I'm gonna be like, oh, I have one, buy my credit copy, and they're gonna be like, nah. So I bought one for collecting and keeping nice. Whether or not I keep it depends on how much I use this, um, but I can actually see myself using this deck a lot. I really do enjoy the artwork and I'm starting to become familiar enough with my cards where I don't necessarily need the imagery to match up. Like I can, I feel like I'm starting to be able to really graduate to pip decks that kind of nod to what the meaning is. So I'm going to go ahead and do a one card pull for us. Um, or you know what, I'll do a three card reading for us. I think that'll be nice. I'll do a bottom, a middle, and a top. All right. So, oh, we pulled, for tonight, we pulled the Ace of Swords. Again, we've got that macaw going on there. We pulled the Seven of Cups. And we pulled the Six of Wands. Mm. 
Okay, so for this, hmm, what am I going to say about this? Um, so we've got the ace, which is like new ideas, and you know, it's like a like a aha moment, like you're like a lightning bolt eureka type moment thing going on. Um, and the seven of cups is about um, you know clear decision making, like just being making sure that you know exactly what's going on. It could, it's also a card of deception, actually, um, because you don't, you never know who's, hey, Kelly, how are you? Um, you never know who's going to, hi, ow, yes, hi. Um, you never, like, it, it's a card of deception because somebody could be handing you a, yes, you can still buy this deck. I put a link in the description below, um, and that will take you to his backer kit where you can order copies of the deck. Um, so we've got, um, like the, 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 you know, it's, what was I saying? It was, um, it's a card of deception because somebody could be like some, like a choice could look like it's good, but in fact it is not. See, that's what happens when you stand on my shoulder and you claw me and then I move suddenly. Just that's what happens. Um, and then we've got the six of wands, which is, um, off the top of my head, like I'm drawing a blank and I don't know why. <coughs> Hi, honey. Um, oh my goodness. This bird is like really, <laughs> I love her. I love her so much. And that's, I just have to keep reminding myself that I love her when she's being difficult. Um, oh, success. Durr. The six of wands, the guy's riding in on his horse and he's like, that is like stuff I, okay, so a card of success. So, all right, for this reading, I think what the, I think what we're getting with this reading for us this week, for like a general energy reading for us for the week is stay sharp mentally. Um, you know, like you know, like just just keep your brain on. Like don't 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 let yourself slip into autopilot. And when decisions do come your way, use all of your tools to weigh the decision. Like try the decision on intuitively, like build, you know, go through all your options for each decision in your head, see how it feels, make sure you do your research for each thing. Like, especially if you're met with a, like if you're met with like a little decision, like should I have hazelnut coffee or French vanilla coffee today? Like maybe be like, mm, I'm in the mood for French vanilla. Like you're not gonna, it's not like that kind of decision isn't, clearly not the decision we're talking about, but when a big decision comes your way this week, you're going to want to kind of like think about it, weigh your options carefully. If there's research to be done, we live in a world with Google, there's no excuse. Um, so definitely Google your options. And, you know, as long as you do that and you like kind of stay vigilant as far as your intuition and uh, pros and cons are, cons you know, weigh up pros and cons, like just do your homework as far as each decision is concerned, you're going to make the right one. So I don't think we really need to worry about anything bad coming our way this week. It's a very good reading. Um, yeah, see, look, this is, this, like, you, both of these cards are like, okay, the aces, they, you know, aces are what they are. It's really rare that they ever really um, kind of depict what's going on. It's just usually like a, hey, a thing, and then, you know, it's new because it's new energy for that suit. But, like, the seven, this is a, the, this, this seven is a much better image for, um, remember, like, an illustrated pip that gives hints and nods to its, like, RWS origin than this guy. I feel like you did the dragons first and then was kind of like, oh, maybe I should kind of tie in a little more meanings or um, maybe he just got a little, well, he does have horses hooves. I will give him that. Like he does have horses hooves. So that should kind of help you to remember the horse that he rides in on. But um, there's no wreath really, or, you know, there's no wreath worked in. There's no, I believe there's a dove also in that. Like it could have been, it could have been a little more evocative of the six of wands. But again, the artwork is so beautiful. Like once you kind of remember what's going on, you 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 kind of don't care. Um, so yeah, that's the reading for this. Just keep your eyes peeled and and do your pros and cons list and whatnot when making a big decision, and you're sure to make the right one. So anyway. That is my um, that is my first impressions of Arcanus. I will be using it tomorrow in my regular live stream. Um, hopefully, I will have Henrietta appeased. Yes, will I have you appeased by tomorrow? Um, so she she will not be so screamy this time around. Um, I might even 
fly her. She's actually fully flighted, so we fly her across the living room a few times. We do reps because it helps tire her out a little bit. And I'll give her some foraging. <coughs> yes, hi. You are being an antsy brat. So that is my Arcanus review. I, like I said, I could you blame me for not wanting to open that right away? Um, oh, and I have some decks coming tomorrow too, I think. <coughs> Hi. So we'll review those and um, we'll do readings and whatnot. I'm thinking probably like right around five. So anyway, uh, thank you guys very much and I will see you tomorrow. Amy, are you gonna be on tomorrow? Please tell me yes. Um, and I cannot wait to like jump on live stream readings tomorrow. If you want readings, that, that would be a great time to do it. And night guys, um, it was awesome to be on and I will see you tomorrow. Say night Henrietta.